If you're here is because you want to build your first web API or RESTful API in Visual Studio using .NET and C Sharp. If you were looking for something else, this is the time for you to go find the right thing. All right, let's get to it. I'm assuming that you already have Visual Studio 2022 installed on your computer. And if you don't, there are plenty of videos out there where you can find out how to install it. It's pretty easy, actually. The other tool that we are going to be using is called Postman. And that is also very easy for you to install. They have a web version and they also have a desktop version, which is the one I'm going to be using. So please go ahead and download that tool. All right, so let's get back to Visual Studio. We are going to go down to create new project. I already have C Sharp as the language that we are going to be using. And let's just search for API up here. So there are a couple of flavors of it. This is using minimal APIs, which is a bit more complicated. It's a more lightweight type of solution or project, but we are going to go with the Core Web API, which is the first option here. So let's go ahead and click that. Then click on Next. For the project name, I'm going to rename it to my first API. Let's go ahead and click Next. I'm going to be using .NET 8 LTS or long-term support, and I'm going to click the option to configure HTTPS. I'm going to enable open API support, which I'll explain what that is later. And I want to use controllers. Let's click create out of the box. Microsoft creates a controller for you, and I'm going to explain what the controller does. Okay, let's go ahead and close this window. We won't need it. And let's go to the controllers folder. Okay, let's get rid of this box down here and let's open the weather forecast controller. What we've done so far is creating the solution or creating the project. I haven't written any lines of code. All I did was close windows. And if we go ahead and run it, you can run it by pressing F5 or by clicking this play button here. This window here is asking me if I trust the self-signed certificate that is used for web development, which is okay in this case. It's not something that you are going to publish. So it is safe for you to just click, don't ask me again and click yes. We get a confirmation. Are you sure you want to add this certificate? Yes. We want to go ahead and add it. There's also another certificate created by IIS Express. And let's go ahead and click yes. Yes, they really want to make sure that you agree to use a self-signed certificate. Once you run the project, the browser is going to automatically open. OK, so here is what it looks like. Notice that we haven't written any code. All we did was create the project and run it. And we automatically get one route. And we can go ahead and try this route. If you click on try out and click execute, this is actually going to make a request to your API and it's going to return data. And this is the response that it's getting. We can even go back to the code and we can set a breakpoint. You are going to see that the breakpoint is going to be hit if we click execute. This is a really good way for debugging and we might get into debugging some of our code. So let's go ahead and stop it for now. So if we start going through the code, you are going to see that we have an API controller and we are setting a route to the same name of the controller, which is this controller here. As part of the route, you are going to see weather forecast, which is the name of the controller. If we run the application again, you can see that when we send a request, it is sending it to this URL. And this bit is a piece that we care about. So this is the name of the controller without the word controller being included here. So that becomes part of the route. Don't forget to stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to give you a really good nugget that is one of the most important things for you to know when it comes to web APIs. So what's happening here is that the controller action, which is essentially a function, is referred to as a controller action. In this case, it is simply called get and is responding to the HTTP get verb. I don't want to confuse you by going into detail about HTTP verbs, but the two HTTP verbs that are used the most are get and post. There's also put, delete, and patch, but post and get are the ones that are used the most. Yeah, these glasses are definitely better. You don't see as much of a reflection. Okay, so what I was saying, to explain the point that I'm trying to make, let me run the project again and let me open Postman real quick. So if we click on try out again, I'm going to grab this URL. And I'm going to copy and paste it into Postman. 
and I'm going to go ahead and send a request. I forgot to get rid of the rotation mark there. Oh yes, I'm gonna disable SSL verification. And this is again, because we have the self-signed certificate that is used only for development. Okay, so this is what I wanted to point out. So here, the only thing that you are sending is that you are sending a request to this endpoint, which is matching the name of the controller. And you are specifying that you are making a get request there. Now, if we go back to the code, this code is specifying that this method here, or this controller action, is going to respond to HTTP GET. And this is a pure form of a RESTful API, but we want to specify multiple controller actions that respond to the HTTP GET verb. So let's go ahead and do a couple of changes. So let's say that you wanted to add a different route on the same controller. What we would have to do is we would have to get rid of this part here and let's rename this controller action to match the name of the route that we are going to create right now. We are going to call this get weather forecast. And we are going to specify the route that this controller action is going to respond to, which is going to be get weather forecast. I usually like having the controller action and the routes match the name or have matching names, but you don't always have to. Okay, so now let's run this again. And let's open Postman again. Now notice that if we send a request, we are getting a 404 error, which means that the route or the resource that we are trying to access is not there. And that is because we changed the location of it. So we have to now add something else to the URL, which is get weather forecast. We send it and we get the response. Now this is what's happening here. We're indicating what URL or what endpoints we are going to be responding to. So we are going to take the name of the controller. We're going to add a forward slash, and then we are going to add the value or the string for the controller action. Now, if we look in Postman, that is exactly what is happening here. So we have the name of the controller and we have the name of the controller action. And this is useful because you can have different controller actions that do different things or return a different response based on what you are calling. Let's go ahead and add a new endpoint. So to make things easier, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this whole controller action because I'm lazy and I don't want to type a lot. Uh, and we are going to rename this to simply forecast. So then now this route, or this controller action is going to respond to forecast by itself. And instead of returning five elements, we are going to return only two. So that way we'll be able to see that we are actually returning different data. And obviously you can write code to return different things depending on what your program does. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Now notice that now we have two routes. One is get weather forecast and the other one is forecast, but they are both responding to the HTTP get verb. Okay, let's go to Postman. And now if we call the get weather forecast endpoint, we get five elements. One, two, three, four, five. And if we simply call the forecast endpoint, we get now two elements. Now I'm going to show you how you can send a bit of information to your controller action, which is usually the way the APIs work. So I'm going to create a new controller action. I'm going to call it my info. A controller action is also going to be matching the same name. The difference here is that now we are going to expect some data to be sent and it's going to be of type string and the variable is going to be called info. Let's get rid of this code here. The return type for this method or this controller action is going to change and it's going to be simply a string. And 
we are going to be grabbing the info value, whatever the user sends in the request, and we are simply going to return it as part of the response. And it's going to look something like this. All right, let's go ahead and run it. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's go ahead and set it up in Postman. So the controller, no, I think I got ahead of myself. So the controller still named the same. The route is called my info. And it's going to expect the query parameter, which is called info. And the value is going to be, I'm going to set it to test. Let's go ahead and send it. This is the response you get. The info you sent in your request is test. So if we go ahead and change this to hello world, send that and you'll see a display here. So this is making a round trip. You are sending this query parameter and the API is responding with this. Now we are going to create a controller action that responds to post request. But before that, let me go ahead and create a class real quick. We are going to be using this in our new endpoint. So let's say that this is going to respond to post request and the route is going to be person. And it's going to be public. It's going to return, return a string. And we are going to have it match the name of the route as we have before. And this is going to be expecting something which we are going to grab from the body of the request. And this is going to expect an object. And we're going to call that request. And we are going to be doing something similar to what we did earlier. We are going to return just a string with the values that were passed. The person you passed is first name and request last name. All right, let's go try it out. Let's go ahead and run it. Let's create another request. This is going to be a post. Let's paste the URL and let's change it to match the new route, which is person. And let's set the body. So the body is going to be uh, of type JSON. And it's going to look something like this. So first name is going to be John. And last name, you guessed it. OK, let's go ahead and send that request. All right, and there you have it. It's the person you passed is John Doe. And let's go put a breakpoint and look at this real quick. There is a lot of functionality already built in or that .NET is handling for you behind the scenes. As long as you match the format of the object type that is expected, the values that you send will automatically be mapped as you see here. So first name is John and last name is Doe. So now, obviously, if you are building a real application, you will be doing a lot of logic or more logic here. Um, or handling your request in a different way, not just outputting it like I am doing. But this is just showing you the gist of how to set up different routes and how to pass values into your API. Okay, now let's get to the thing that I promised uh, earlier in the video. So one of the things that you need to learn how to use are settings. What do I mean by that? When you deploy your application, you probably have to change environment settings or settings that apply to the environment where you are deploying. When you are developing locally, you don't really care about those things. You simply can hard code them. But once you deploy your code to an actual domain, and not, it's not just local host as it is now, you will need to implement app settings, which change from one environment to the other, especially down the road when your application actually starts getting traction and you have to build CI CD pipelines. So this is how you do it. By default, your application comes with a file called app settings. Let's go ahead and open that. Let's go ahead and add a setting here. Let's call it special setting. And the setting is going to be, or the special setting is just going to hold something that 
could mean something for your environment. But in this case, I just want to show how you can read values from your app settings file. Okay, so now let's read. Uh, we need to set this up so we can read from that configuration. These are things that are already built into .NET, which save you a lot of time so you don't have to code this from scratch. And for this, let's create another endpoint. Uh, let's start. Let's start from this one. This is very similar to what we're going to be building. Um, and let's change this to settings. This is going to be called settings. We don't expect any parameters. And we are going to read from the app settings file. special setting value is all right let's try it so the route is settings let's run it and let's go to postman and let's change this request to call that endpoint and this is settings and okay let's send it and there you go the special setting value is a special settings value, which comes directly from the app settings file here. Now, when you deploy your application to an environment, you can change that app settings file to be something that is going to be matching that particular environment. And there your application, you won't have to write any additional code. Your application will read from those values and do what it's supposed to do if you coded your application correctly. I really hope you found this video useful and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications and check out the other tutorials that I have on the channel. Thank you. Catch you in the next one. Well, that went pretty well. Actually it did go well. I wonder if I forgot anything else that's valuable. Hmm. Well, I guess if I did, I'll create a new yeah, I'll create a new video if I need to.